Good morning. So this is your Grammar and Craft lecture for this week today and really for the whole unit we will be doing Grammar and Craft assignments. We're going to start focusing on what's called the sophistication point. In your essays for the AP literature test, you can earn one point for sophisticated language or you could not earn it. It's a dichotomy. It's a either or experience and we want to get it. I want you to get that point. But of course, as always, it fits into the larger context of just the wonderful life skill of having the ability to craft really fluid and complicated syntax when necessary. So we're going to do some of that today. So we're going to work with semicolons and dashes today. They are such a useful piece of punctuation, both of them, to build this ever more sophisticated control of language. You use them to link two similar ideas together. When you can't fit everything that you want into one independent clause, but when a period between ideas feels like too strong of a separation, that's when you use a semicolon or a dash. So I'll show you some examples here. This is from Lord of the Flies. My first sentence, for example, is Jack is not a sociopath, held back only by the rules and punishments of society. That's my first independent thought. But I want to say more. I want to illustrate why do I believe that? I could write a period here. That would be fine. It would. But by linking it with a semicolon, it creates an even stronger connection between my ideas and develops my argument with more fluidity. So it's a question of degree. It's not a question of accuracy. To what degree are my ideas fluid, interesting, and linked? That's what we're seeking. So I've added on a second independent clause. He has moments of embarrassment, of shame, of regret, of humanity. Second example. When the officer asks who, in who is in charge, Jack hesitates, then keeps his place. Again, I have more to say on this idea, and I want to immediately get to it. So I use a semicolon. It is Ralph who steps forward and owns the calamity. So in both cases here, You'll notice it is two independent clauses. Fancy word for complete sentence. And that complete sentence can have as many pieces in it as you would normally use in a construction. And so in my first, I have a, what's called a compound sentence. I have an independent clause with a dependent clause. It's a complete thought, all of it together, an independent clause altogether. And then in my second sentence, similarly, I start with a dependent clause and then I finish that sentence. So it's a complicated sentence on its own. And then the semicolon, it ends up being a four part sentence or a three part sentence. That is the power of the semicolon. You can keep building these ideas together. Of course, you can overdo it. If you did this in every single sentence in the essay, the reader and you would start to feel overwhelmed by the amount of linking. Um, but that's not what we're worried about today. We're not worried about sentence variety. Okay, so a couple of non-examples. Um, the first is a non-example because the ideas are not linked. And a semicolon really only works when the ideas are. So I say, Jack is not a sociopath. Ralph's dad is in the Navy and he is confident they will be rescued. Just, it's very strange and it doesn't work. So when you're using a semicolon or a dash, the idea that guides your sentence is critical to whether or not the punctuation is effective. Technically, it's not inaccurate. Grammatically, these are two independent clauses linked, but it doesn't work as a, as a reader, as I read that, it doesn't work with the way that I'm thinking. There's another way you can do it wrong. It's the second non-example. When the officer asks who is in charge, semicolon, Ralph steps forward. So this is simply inaccurate. The first clause is a dependent clause. It's not an independent thought. It doesn't exist on its own. If that's the case, I have to use a comma. I cannot use a semicolon. A semicolon functions as a period. I would not use a period in this case. It would be inaccurate. Therefore, I cannot use a semicolon. So um, dashes. Let's just talk about that for a moment. We are going to practice with this I want you to feel how similar a dash is to a semicolon. And the way that I'm going to describe it is the dash is casual wear. It's the casual wear version of the dressed up semicolon. So the semicolon is business attire. 
and the dash is jeans and a t-shirt, but they function the exact same. They are identical in usage, and really what you'll find as a writer is you, you'll develop an affinity for one. You'll like one more than the other. Or in certain scenarios, you'll wish for the more formal one, in others you'll wish for the more informal one. So here I have a couple of sentences, the exact same one, and you'll see how that works. The story of an hour is ruthlessly loyal to a linear structure. The hour of the story is the only fleeting glimpse of freedom in Louise's lifetime before she dies. There's my semicolon, and now I'll replace that with a dash. The story of an hour is ruthlessly loyal to a linear structure, dash. The hour of the story is the only fleeting glimpse of freedom in Louise's lifetime before she dies. They're both fine. I'll do that one more time, this time with Waiting by William Carlos Williams, which unfolds structurally in the same way as the story itself. The beauty of the speaker's peaceful moment dwindles just as the longer stances are reduced in their final sections. So make a liner dash, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so your assignment. We're going to practice with those mid-sentence dashes and semicolons. We're going to feel how similar they are, how they're actually the same. Here is your task. Finish this thought below, but do so in two sentences, one with a semicolon and one with a dash. Try not to tell me exactly what nonlinear means. Try to expand into the story's content, address the discussion question of why is it written in this way. So give me some real stuff in that sentence instead of just a definition, and that will be useful pre-writing for you in your organization assignment. You can start your second sentence however you like, but I would like your first sentence to start with this concept. The Joy Luck Club is written with non-linear structure. Complete my sentence with your own using a semicolon or dash, and then add, add on to it with an additional sentence using the one that you hadn't used yet, a semicolon or dash. So two sentences, one with a semicolon, one with a dash. And put that in your BGD and on the discussion board as well.